deux mots. Well, on one hand, this video is about my small obsession I have with those vintage Dumo embossing labelers. But on the other hand, I feel tired right now. So I want to spend some quality time in my small little shop at home. No meetings, no phone calls, just me having fun without chasing perfection. But let's find out why I have purchased this exact model with a small test and compare the typeface it has to other models I own. And no, Dumo doesn't sponsor any of those videos. After Dumogate I also only purchase used and mainly vintage gear. Ladies and gentlemen, this Dumo. is number five. Let's have a closer look at these five different typefaces. Yes, they look very similar to each other, but they differ quite a bit in terms of height, width and letter spacing. I'm sure the geeks of you watching are interested in which embossing labeler is creating what typeface. Starting with typeface number one, it is created by this compact vintage Fala. If you know its model number, please write it down in the comments. Typeface number two is created by this model number 1700, but it lacks a zero and a one, so I think it is meant to use an O and an I instead. Both Dumos should have the same age, but if you compare the two, the second one is clearly taller. The third one is a current day Dumo Omega, and even though the embosser feels the best while using, its produced letters look the worst to me. The spacing between its letters is just way too big. A current day Dumo Junior looks better, but produces really, really tiny letters, as you can see. And why did I need a fifth one? Well, even though one and two are producing the prettiest labels, their age doesn't make them really reliable. So I was looking for something to bridge the gap between both labeler worlds that I can use daily. But wait a second. Of course, I also own a second biscuit box full of mostly vintage labels and multiple colors. Look, vintage labels with a black logo have a matte finish that looks way better. Somehow their modern shiny appear doesn't only make them look cheaper, they also feel much cheaper as they also reduce their thickness. But now Let's gather some materials. I found this piece of wood with a chipped corner. And instead of cutting it off, let's do some gold plating. And instead of using the right materials for it, let's have some fun with super glue. I was just curious to see if it would work at all. But what could go wrong, anyhow? Some dabs of it and a real leaf of gold. So unprofessional to just squeeze it in. Without proper tools and even using a Q-tip. But it doesn't look too bad, I guess. Let's make sure it stays opaque with a second layer of gold. It will get sent it off anyhow, so I'll just leave it be to dry for a while.
for the next step, I'll be using a thick piece of cardboard that's former jar was to be packaging material and spray paint in this beautiful gray matte color. You're right, I'm just gathering scraps of materials I could use, even upcycle as you wish to call it, leaving a bit of wabi-zabi on every piece. I mean, I'm just having fun around here. And now we need to let that also dry. Hmm, it doesn't look too bad, but I'll skip the part with the sander and its noise. Whew, that was loud. But now look at this, isn't this block just beautiful? Let's have fun, put some finish on and have a look at how great the grain pops. At first I thought this must be a piece of Zürichote as I have them a lot, but the wood doesn't turn black with this uh, type of finish. And it is way too heavy to be Paduk, so I really do think this must be a piece of rosewood. And to have a heavy base for a nice Dumo stand should turn out great. <laughs> Almost dropped it there. I'm making sure that everything is covered with this Danish oil. I think this turned out nice, so let's put it on some blocks and let it dry again. Ooh, and don't forget to spread your oily rag so it doesn't catch on fire. And now I'm getting back to that piece. I found these strips of beech wood laying around and I've also prepared the strip of brass to cut a 90 degree angle with my track saw on this whole platter. But first things first, this piece of cardboard feels great now after some coats of spray paint. I just need to trim it first. And for that I need to use the forbidden method of reverse cutting on the track saw. In theory. I should get way less frayed edges as this is still a piece of cardboard. Ah, let's find out. I hope it works. Yeah, not looking too shabby. And now I'm just tinkering around to find out a proper depth. 
and also width of my small tray. Of course, was the spray paint only meant for its bottom? The top will be covered with a piece of scrap leather to give it a fancy touch. Just a touch. So, let's spread that glue and put on some clamps. Yeah, and this is just another moment that I must say I love this Festool MFT tabletop very, very. It's just so versatile in its use in my small shop. Tomorrow. And after a day to let the glue cure, it's time to trim off the excess of the leather patch. I like to use regular X-Acto knives for tasks like these. With a fresh blade, it cuts easily. I think this will turn out just fine. Some cutting. Gluing. Of course, I like to use super glue. Having a coffee break, you can sponsor with the link down below. Trimming. Sanding. Presto.
Finally, I can add some feet out of the same scrap leather material. Nope, this isn't my finest work, but I'm just having fun. It'll do. And nope, I haven't forgotten my little block here. Let's drill some holes and see what we can do with an old coat hanger. And yeah, of course I framed it in a way you can't see anything. But hey, at least it holds up by itself. And no, I don't know how I screwed this up. <laughs> I think you shouldn't be in your shop after long hours of work when you're tired already. And now... I just need to size it and bend it and... make it work. A few moments later. Ah, I'm not sure what I was thinking there, but hey, I got it so far at least, and I can get the edge off. bend it up a little bit and think about the next step which is adding a magnet for the stand to hold my Dumo labeler. Yeah, and there should be enough space to add a nail as a counterpart for my magnet. Yeah, and also freehand drilling. It's fun. This should do. Just at the nail end. You got it. I'll use super glue. But just after a sip of delicious coffee, you can still sponsor one in the link down below. No, I can mark the position of the magnet and 
just like magic, the hole appeared, only to show you that I used super glue again to glue the magnet in. And that's it. I created a stand from scraps for my Dumo, just as a recreation activity, to have a break from all the stress I got during long working hours. What do you think? Do you like this piece? Even though it has flaws, obviously. What do you think about Wabi Zabi and letting your furniture show their lives? collecting patina. Please write it down in the comments. But that wraps it up for today.